Hi, we're having a conversation with Dr. Richard Smith, and he is the director of the Center for Neurologic Study in San Diego, California. Um, Dr. Smith, um, how does amyotrophic lateral sclerosis affect people? ALS, or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, is a chronic neurodegenerative disease that primarily affects the neuromuscular system, that is, the, the muscles, leading to slow, progressive paralysis, affecting your speech, swallowing arms and legs. And uh, it's invariably a, a fatal disease. There are some long-term survivors, and the disease um, can be almost thought of as a slow form of polio, but it's different than polio, and that polio was in a acute disease, and this is a slow, progressive disease. And uh, what are the known causes for, for this disease? Ninety percent of the cases are what are called sporadic, meaning we really don't know the cause. And about ten percent of the cases are familial, and great progress has been made in identifying genes that lead to this disease, much as uh, genes can have an effect on your hair color or your height and so forth. And, and how do you deal with uh, diseases whose cause you don't know? And uh, is it different from the diseases which the causes are known? Well, for the most part, we don't have an adequate therapy for ALS. So there are two strategies. One of them is to, to manage the symptoms of ALS, and that can be done reasonably effectively but the emphasis now is on trying to develop new therapies for the disease. And we and other people have been very involved in designing drugs that are based on some of this new genetic information. So at the, at the minimum, in other words, as a start, we think that there's a, a, a good chance we can actually slow or possibly even stop some of these familial forms of the disease. So that's very exciting. and. Uh, the results are not all in yet, but uh, we're, we're quite excited about this possibility for coming up with new therapies based on the new information we have about at least some causes of the disease. And specifically, what are these new therapies? Well, one uh, of the genes that's been identified affects a, a protein called SOD that's in every cell of your body. And this protein uh, is... Uh, probably misfolded or misbehaves. And so a, a very simple idea is to try to reduce the expression of that protein in the brain of patients. And what we've done is we've designed a molecule that can go into the nerve cells and other cells in the brain and actually almost act like software and down-regulate the expression of this protein. And in animals, We've shown that not only can we downregulate this, this uh, protein, but in animals carrying a gene for this form of ALS, in other words, a human gene has been inserted into rats and, and into mice. And this therapy actually prolongs survival in these animals, suggesting a therapy like this might very well work in humans. And as we speak, the first human experiments are being conducted in the United States to test this idea. And so, so the first humans are being exposed to this therapy? As recently as two weeks ago in Boston, the, the, the first patient in the world uh, with ALS was given uh, a, a, th this uh, drug. And we're hoping now in uh, five, five, six centers around the United States to recruit patients from uh, mostly from the United States, but in fact, if there are patients in, in uh, Guatemala or Mexico and so forth who qualify, I, I, I suspect that those patients uh, would, would be uh, encouraged to uh, participate in these studies as well. How do patients qualify? Well, like any clinical trial, um, there are always conditions. And the, the first one would be you have to have th th this particular familial form of ALS caused by a mutation of this particular gene. So if, if one had a family member with ALS, 
uh, and there was a family history of ALS, and the genetic testing was done and showed that the, the person had this particular type of ALS, then they might be eligible if their disease wasn't too far advanced. At, at, at the present, like so many experiments, you know, this is not something that you would administer to someone who you know, has very advanced disease because people need to be relatively healthy to participate in the study. You know, you have to travel, you have to be able to go to the clinic and so forth and so on. So, you know, most studies that are done like this are done in people who are in the early phases of the disease or have a modest or moderate involvement at the time that they're enrolled into the trial. So there are minimal criteria for getting into a trial like this. So when will the drug be available for the public? The um, proof that a drug actually works can be a lengthy process, maybe taking several years to, to finally prove you know, convincingly that, that a drug is not only effective, but it also has to be safe. And that's what clinical research is all about. Once that evidence is available, namely efficacy, meaning the drug works and that it's relatively safe, then uh, that information is, at least in the United States, is submitted to uh, a regulatory agency. In the United States, they call it the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration. And they review the data and ultimately make a decision whether it, it can be then uh, prescribed by other doctors. And so they give permission for a drug to be sold in the market. And I presume there are similar regulatory issues in almost every country. So the drug is proven effective, let's say, in one major uh, area of the world, usually the same data can be used to submit to uh, other regulatory agencies. In other words, in Guatemala, my guess would be that they probably would accept data generated in, in, in the United States. Uh, uh, but I, I think uh, you may be more aware of the regulatory. Uh, yes, they usually accept uh, accepted that, of course. Yeah. And, uh, and finally, so it won't, be, it, it won't be in the next two years. I, I think it would be un unlikely. The interesting possibility is, is that, that a drug that it would be very effective, that there would be an, an accelerated approval so that whereas some indications, it might take years to, to finally do as enough trials to finally convince uh, the FDA that you know, they should license the drug. But for a disease like ALS, I think any really convincing evidence that a drug was effective would probably lead to an accelerated approval, in which case two years would be a spectacular uh, a time frame for getting a drug approved. But it's not unheard of that a drug could be approved in, 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 in a two-year time period. I think that's probably more likely to turn out to be three to four years before this would be approved, if, if it's effective and safe. Well, thank you, Dr. Smith, for sharing these ideas, these exciting new ideas with us. And thank you very much.